All right, so welcome to Second Chance Garage. We're inside my camper. I have to do a little cleaning and organizing, so I thought, what the heck? It's a small camper, it won't take long, so I'll shoot a quick little video of it. I've got a fan up here, it's USB port powered. This is my phone charger here that I got like uh, these are anchored down these two aren't for papers and magazines and stuff like that so I gotta get this organized get this rolled up real quick <laughs> yeah let's throw that up there and this I bought it's one of these just a little plastic thing you buy at Walmart. Comes in handy for like putting your cell phone in there, standing up, and then it's got this one's got about a 45 degree angle, and this one's got pretty much a straight up pitch. So I can put my cell phone in there, plug it in, and then set it right here on the shelf and watch YouTube clips. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now might give you some more light. Yeah, I got a lamp over there plugged in, and then I don't know if you can see it or not, but I got a bunch of container storage containers and stuff over here. It's got pens and stuff like that in it. All right, and then I have to vacuum the floor in here because it's getting nasty. So let me roll up the old sleeping bag. Yeah, get this out of the way. This is just a sheet I keep on here. Protect it so if you're dirty or something, you know, coming in. And then this actually goes on here. Fishing pole. Fishing pole. Yeah. Makes it thicker. So that way, when you're setting on it, it makes it into a bench. So that way it's actually pretty comfortable to set on. My head just barely clears, but it does clear. So anyway, yep, there we go. But I gotta get my vacuum out, so I have a fake compartment back here. Oop. Symbol the vacuum sweeper. It's just got a. I'll show you here in a minute. It probably needs empty. I haven't emptied it in a while. I did a video on these under most underrated vacuums. Yeah, you just hit this trigger. And then in there is where all your stuff is. Empty it. Perfect. Perfect. Awesome. There we go. It's got a little tab. Let's flip up here. it all up on the floor and goes down locks together and then bam it doesn't have any impeller or nothing
nothing in it. It's got rollers on it. Boom! And then you plug it in somewhere. We'll just plug it in here. Since the camper's so massive. <laughs> yeah, I did have that plug in go out. I'm going to have to figure it out. That's a dedicated circuit for my... Uh, that's what's messed up about it. Dedicated circuit strictly for my water heater. On demand water heater. On demand water heater. Got your temperature display on the side and all that. I set this, flip the switch, it diverts it from here down to this hose to my shower. Set your temperature, go in there, take your shower. On demand water heater, works awesome. Bought it cheap off eBay. Just generic. I think I saw, I think I saw it on YouTube, but I only seen like one video on it. Yeah. Actually, I think I saw it on a Van Life video. A Van Life video, I believe, is what I saw it on. Man, that thing's dirty. Powerful. It's a powerful machine. But it worked awesome. I don't know if you can see this stuff on the floor or not. Pick it up. I'm going to show it to you. Red cones, crap all over the floor. Oh, I forgot. That's the thing from the sink. Hot from the sink. Got it sitting down here next to the garbage can. Super dirty. Oh, super needed it. Cleaning my house on Saturday morning and Sunday morning. Look at this. Table. And then here's the thing I like about it. I just now do the corner. Yeah, that's how I count. The best thing is, you got a spider web going up. <laughs> you know, it's long enough, you just don't no wait up and get your spider web. Yep. And I ain't sponsored by any of this stuff. I just do this kind of stuff to help my fellow people out. That. We're going to do a counter, a counter. Yep. I'm going to do my mud pot table. I can use my mud pot table. Yep. Well, anyways. Counter on. On bigger. And then I just simply 
open up your switch, pull the handle, the garbage can in the back, and then, yeah, I ain't wearing a belt, it should be. And then, plumber's crack, <laughs> that's free. <laughs> that's free right there. <laughs> Trying to readjust it. <laughs> oh, here. There we go. Yeah. Gotta angle you up a little bit more, it looks like. Yep. Yeah, pl <laughs> plumber crash free. <laughs> uh, anyways, my belts are hanging up in here oh that's another thing i'll show you you've probably seen it but it was one of the handiest things i ever put in this camper and that is this right here this is just a simple piece of trim i took bought a bunch of hooks and then and then screwed it right to the wall and as you can see it's one of the handiest things in a small camper look at this i got belts hanging on it i got shaving bags my wood bag check this out this, this is super handy if you're camping you got me a leather bag and it looks like a bag but it's not. It unfolds. And then what you do is you lay your wood in there, fold it up in the middle, your wood's in here, and then you can carry a jag of wood, you know, because it bulges out. The wood's in there. Yeah, very handy. You put all that stuff on here. Keep it out of the way. I've got dust pans with from the Dollar Tree I got uh, cheap Dollar Tree headlamp lifesaver yeah just that kind of stuff you know stuff that you want to be able to have quick access to these are my belts this is my shaving stuff compass this is my I got a sign that has my my name plus the camp sign on it. Uh, this is just a backpack. Oh, these are actual lights. I don't know if you can see them. They're lights for my awning. They, they look like shotgun shells. They ain't got them for me. Yeah, I'm a redneck. Who cares? But the thing I was looking for last night <clears throat> that Walmart is supposed to sell that I wasn't able to find is a countertop ice maker. Oh, here. This is a quick grab bluegill fishing kit it hangs up here I just hang up here so if you're gonna go fishing for some bluegill because that, that's usually what I fish for uh, yep I'm gonna hang my coat up here too but uh, and then over here this I got a hook where I got my fishing poles and then I got a laundry basket that I can put here because this will pull out over top of it. And then this is for swimming. It's a net bag so you can throw clothes and stuff in there. So it stays dry. It'll dry faster. Won't mold on you or nothing. You know, that kind of stuff. Okay, now I'm going to put my 
thing back here. I'd show you my foldable stool, but it's currently in the basement. I was using it for inventory and food and stuff. But yeah, I just have a little door back here. And this dead spot back here. I gotta put this in first. Every square inch that I could put in storage, I did. Okay, I'll show you some of the storage. I got okay let's see here cabinet drawers so all this is storage under here this is hollow so I put storage here but I can put another one over there but I haven't done it yet uh, that is my electrical switch. Uh, underneath that, it's got my water tank and my electrical boxes and stuff under there. This is all storage. That had a furnace in it. I took the furnace out. Because it was, man, you'd, it'd eat you out of house and home on propane. And that's where I keep my chemical toilet when I'm not using it. This is obviously where I keep pantry food items and stuff. And then like my lights, extra gas, you know. And then underneath this bench, I don't know, can you see that? Yeah, this whole this bench on the dinette, that's all storage with an access door right there. There's storage all under here. Underneath this bench, there's a toilet paper stack. That is all storage and there's an access from outside. And underneath that TV is storage. Let me see if I can show you here. All storage all the way down so pretty much any square inch I could make into storage since I was rebuilding it myself I used every square inch for storage and then all this this is actually got pins that's supposed to fold down onto these steel rails out to the door and then you can sleep two people on top of it, but I never do that. So now I've got storage up there. That whole thing is now all storage. You know. Which comes in really nice. Handy. Yeah. So, anyways. Uh, yeah, I can store a lot of crap in this thing now. It's a good thing. <laughs> Boy, it worked out a good thing uh, but anyways put this over here don't look so bad okay now I'm getting ready to get ready to do some crafty stuff here I'm not gonna shoot this in the same video but I won't even shoot a video on it but this was on my fireplace mantle I don't know if it's coming out backwards on the, I don't know if it's coming out backwards on the camera or not. Let's see. J, E, Jesus, 
in the open spots. Anyway, see the J. Well, anyway, I'm going to paint the tops of these white since they were burnt. So, anyway, I, at Walmart, I got some of this, just some of this water base white paint. So I can paint the tops of those. So maybe it'll show up a little better. So anyway, if you like the video, uh, this is what I was do, doing Sunday morning. Uh, I got to, uh, I'm going to watch some creatures on TV. And maybe some on YouTube this morning. So anyway. I am going to get off of here since I got the camper picked up. Phew, is that a lot of work? <laughs> it's so huge. <laughs> but actually, I'll be honest with you, uh, I wouldn't want a bigger camper. This is the size that I need, me and my friend. I got a female friend that comes around from time to time. And she, me and her, fit in here just fine. I mean, she comes around when she wants to. I never know when she's going to show up. But anyway, the point of the story is we've taken to camping before, and it's big enough for two of us. We don't, you know, mostly all we do is sleep in it anyway. It's got an awning that we stay, you know, and then we'll build a fire and I've got one of those awnings, 10 by 10 or 12, I think it's 12 by 12. And it's black with white legs on it so it matches the camper we set out in front of the awning. So we got plenty of, you know, dry space if it's raining. And just two of us, plenty big enough. Uh, I think the most people I've had under it, I designed it for four. You know, because you could put two up against the camper and two facing you, and you're still gonna stay dry, you're still gonna stay out of the sun. I think I had, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think I had seven of us under it at one time and it was and it was pouring rain and it was tight but we were able to squeeze pretty much squeeze underneath it all to stay dry but it's really designed for four people and if you put your table in the middle and you put two sideways and the other two sideways as long as the rain's coming from the, you know the camper side you will never get wet it's plenty big enough and you'll never get wet you don't you can just sit out there and watch it rain you know but that's what i designed it for but yeah and at one point in time i actually had like just the other day i had Three people sitting on the bench. Um, three people sitting on that bench. I took that stuff off and threw it up there. Okay, then I had one person sitting at this spot in the dinette. Another person sitting at that spot in the dinette. And there was five people and they fit comfortably. We all fit comfortably in here. It's the layout. So then I got a folding stool that I put in front of here. So that makes six. And then I have a collapsible, collapsible stool that somebody could sit on there, which would make seven. And right in front of the door, Right in front of the door. Hey, I got the door open. 
But yeah, right in front of the door, there's still they still have leg room. Plus, you can put somebody on a chair here, one of those little folding chairs, and that makes eight. I have done. I've had eight people in here before, and we are all fit in here comfortably. So I mean, it's only a. Uh, 13 I think the box is only 13 feet the whole trailer from nose to tail is only 16 and then now I've I've been putting drinking the Kool-Aid like everybody else you know putting on the rubber roofs and all this crap and I've been doing it for years on top of this thing well the roofs wobbly and all that stuff but I got patches on it you know when I rebuilt it it had sat out in the woods so it had the crap beat out of it, it had some holes in it I had to patch and stuff well I got to thinking the other day okay I'm not gonna do that anymore once the house is done and I can get this thing get working on this I am going to take a wire wheel I got steel roof on it it's a 1977 Coachman. So what I'm gonna do is take a wire wheel on a three inch hand grinder and just take all the rubber roofing off. Wipe it down with gasoline, the roof of it, out in the yard with gasoline so it'll dry fast in the sun. And then I'm gonna spray it down with, uh, I'm, I, I'm gonna look for Rhino Red, uh, Rhino Bed Liner to spray on the roof. Just see if I can get it in white. Well, I did some research and I couldn't believe it on YouTube, Rhino actually makes an RV roof deal. They're using the Rhino bed liner on roofs of RVs. And they got it painted. I think they're painting them silver. So it helps reflect the heat in the summertime off the roof. But I personally want white. But I don't know. There's companies that are certified in spraying that down. And you'll never have a leak. It, makes, it dries into a plastic. And they put like four coats down. I think it's called Rhino Eco RV Roof. Now, I'm not sponsored by them or nothing, but my roof is going to be perfect candidate for that. So I'm going to try to try to uh, do that because I'm telling you, you put it. The Flex Seal works okay. I just use spray cans, but man, it, you would never. You know how tough a rhino bed liner is. You know, you can throw logs in it and everything else. I was like, screw it, I'm just going to use that. I don't care. Well, then I thought I wasn't going to put that rough stuff in it because, you know, that looks like crap. And the smoother it is, the more the water runs off. Well, then they had said something about they were putting the textured stuff on it because if you don't you can't get up on the roof if it's, it's that slick it's that slick if you don't put the textured stuff in it and you're trying to get up on the roof to like work on your air conditioner you shoot right off of the thing you know so I got thinking about it I thought well you know maybe I will I would rather not have the texture on it because with mine, I can pretty much work on everything. I don't have a roof air conditioner. Mine's sticking out the back. It's a home air conditioner. And stuff like that. So, I mean, once I seal it, I'll never have to get up there. That's a tree lands on it or something. But, you know. But, yeah. So, I thought that would be pretty handy. And if it would just be a sheet of plastic, basically, over everything... And they give you a 10-year warranty on it, apparently. So, I don't know. I thought, what the heck? You know, I might try it. 
nothing else, I'm sure you can buy a cheaper version of it off eBay so you don't have to pay rhino prices, but I don't know for sure. I've never heard of anybody doing it before. It was just something that I finally decided that's what I'm going to do. I'm done drinking the Kool-Aid, replacing, getting up there and sealing stuff. And I don't know how many of my buddies had had their roof on their RVs leak and they wouldn't know it. And one of them had a uh, uh, water leaking around an antenna that he didn't know. He didn't even use the antenna. But it, it, he didn't know it, and it rotted a big spot in his roof he had to fix. It was a big nightmare. But, I mean, he did an awesome job fixing it. That's, that's not the point. The point is, I'm going to avoid all that. I am going to rhino, rhino bedliner mine, and I will never have to do it again. <laughs> Keep in mind, I'm not sponsored by these guys. You know, my roof is all wavy and got low spots. <laughs> But as long as the camper's set and level, it still finds a way and it drains right off the back. But, you know, I'm just like, I'm done with that crap, you know. So, anyway, I'm hoping to find, find it in white. But, anyway, it's just an idea. You guys do your own research. Like I said, I've been thinking about doing this for a couple of years now. Because I leave mine set outside. And right now, every couple, every year or so, I got to get up there, wipe it all down with paint thinner or gasoline or something, clean it all off, then repaint it with, and I just use the spray on flex seal and I mask it off, you know. So I'm just going to do that with the Rhino bed liner stuff. But they do actually make it, but there's only like, I think I, I Google, I YouTubed it, and I think there's only like two videos, so there's not a lot of people that are doing it, but man, it sure saved your roof.